Before we move on to the competition, we have a special guest here today, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Julio Cesar Hernandez, who has graciously joined all the way from Notre Dame today. And we're very excited to introduce him as our keynote speaker. Uh, Professor Hernandez is the author of a master plan for the 21st century Havana and is currently drafting a master plan for the future of Cuba altogether among numerous professional articles published in various international journals. Julio Cesar Perez is currently an associate professor of the practice of the at the University of Notre Dame School of Ar um, Architecture. He previously taught as a visiting professor during the fall of 20, uh, 2012 and lectured in 2011 with the guest juror in 2011 in this institution. In 2001, he became a Loeb Fellow at Harvard University, where he was selected as a 2012-2013 Wilbur Marvin Visiting Scholar. As an academic, he has lectured and taught in the most prestigious universities of both the, of the United States, Canada, Europe, Costa Rica, Cuba, and Bermuda. He's graduated in 1982 from the School of Architecture at the University of Havana, and he's taught design studio and lecture courses in ar arch architecture and urbanism there from 1988 through 2006. He is an accomplished scholar, visionary, and international consultant with proven leadership, communication, and organizational skills concerning strategic planning, consulting, architecture, building history, urbanism, and creating solutions. But without further ado, I would like to welcome Professor Julio Cesar Perez. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. It is a great pleasure and an honor uh, to be here. Thank you for being here. I would like to start by thanking um, this prestigious institution, the Association of Engineers, Cuban American Engineers. And um, I would like to thank engineer Victor Pujals, um, who crafted this invitation. Um, he was telling me this morning that um, I would be glad to skip the winter up north. And um, it's good to be back here in Miami, uh, which is, um, we, we believe, a, a part of Cuba. And um, this is a wonderful initiative. It's wonderful to have the, um, the students and this competition. We do believe that uh, infrastructure is the key to the future, not only of Cuba, but also to the United States. Um, uh, I would like to start um, by saying that we are talking about the future, but for us to know the future, we need to know our past, a past that we are very proud of. Uh, engineering in Cuba was a key point of development from the colonial times. In fact, from the initial times when all the European engineers um, designed and built these wonderful Renaissance fortresses that became the most impressive defensive system in America. Cuba pioneered. Cuba had um, the first aqueduct in America completed by um, the same Italian engineer, Antonelli, by 1592. And throughout history, I will gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show you, sorry, um, how proud we, we are and we should be of our identity as Cubans and how this identity was forged uh, along the 19th century and throughout the whole 20th century. So uh, we believe in the future of Cuba and uh, this is why I've drafted these plans for both Havana and Cuba. This was, by the way, um, the first master plan for Havana, um, drafted by a nephew of Antonelli, uh, Cristobal de Roda. And then this is the first aqueduct in America, as I said, that we should be proud of. And um, then um, Havana became um, the most important colony for Spain, as we know. So everything would be rehearsed there 
everything would happen there before than in any other place. And that would also be a trademark for Cuba along the, along the, the years and along the centuries. Um, in, in the 19th century, the first expansion plan uh, was carried out by, by colonial engineer Antonio Maria de la Torre in Havana, Cuba. The first expansion of the whole America region. And the first uh, prize in the, in the um, international exhibition in Paris um, was awarded to Cuban engineer um, Alvear, Francisco de Alvear, uh, who could not see this project finished because he died before, but he was also the, the man who conceived of uh, the, the Malecon. The first idea for the famous Malecon of Havana that was implemented by U.S. engineers Mead and Whitney between 1898 and 1901, uh, that was Alvear's idea. So it was the embryo that U.S. engineers uh, used for developing this idea further. Um, this is a, a glorious period in, in Cuba because um, the U.S. engineers developed, um, number one, a huge survey of all the infrastructure, as you can see in these plans here, and also uh, works that turned Havana into something that was different from the colonial times to start with the Malecon and then the paving of the streets with a very ad, uh, progressive system, the Macaram uh, system. And then uh, also the, the first and most innovative, innovative um, sewage system what took place in Cuba. And this is one of the, of the what we called the seven wonders, but I, I guess there are more than seven wonders of Cuban uh, engineering is the sewage siphon, uh, which was um, carried out by engineer Samuel Gray. And then uh, in the 1930s, but it started in the 1920s, we have the Central Highway, we have the, uh, the Fox building, which is also um, uh, something to be proud of because Cuban engineers and Cuban architects working together proved that they could do. Uh, uh, an apartment building out of reinforced concrete instead of a, a steel frame structure. And at that time, they were questioned by both American and Canadian engineers. They said, this is not going to happen. This is not feasible. They proved that it was feasible, and they did it. And this is the Foxa building that is um, a gem of Cuban uh, engineering um, then also the Havana Bay Tunnel, it be built in 1958, is also something to be proud of. And then the bridges, the several bridges that were built in Cuba. Uh, but we're now here, present Cuba, 21st century, and we should be aware of the challenges and also the opportunities that we have for engineering projects in Cuba, because infrastructure is a key factor for any future development. And so we have acknowledged it in the plans we have conceived and drafted for the city. Number one, transportation. Infrastructure transportation uh, needs an upgrade. And we, when we refer as an upgrade, we almost say starting from scratch. So there's a lot of work here for any engineering firm, airports, ports, and the whole railway. As you know, Cuba pioneered in railway. In 1837, Cuba became the first country in America to have a railroad after the US and the UK. So that's also something we're proud of, and we're going to see the state of the railway station. So when it comes to airports, um, we know that the many airports in Cuba are facing great challenges because of the increase of tourism. So the current Havana Airport that I'm going to show is in critical condition because it cannot grow further. So we believe, and, and according to these 
this is included in our master plans, uh, that the next uh, future airport for Cuba is one that has the best runways that, were, that was built in the 1940s by U.S. engineers. The company was called La Cayuga, and it was built in San Antonio de los Baños, um, right in the outskirts of Havana, and connected with the Novia del Mediodía Highway um, that I'm going to show also. So we believe that this is the place where the, the next future air, international airport that we aspire to be not only an international airport, but an international hub, yeah, meaning an intermodal um, terminal. Um, then we have, this is the, um, the several terminals uh, that we have uh, currently in the um, Jose Martin International Airport in Havana. The, they lack the appropriate infrastructure in terms of the um, customs. And um, this is the Terminal 3, which is the most uh, modern one, the one here. And um, having flown in late last year there, it shows um, decay and a great need of maintenance as most things and buildings and, and bridges in Cuba. So uh, when it comes to ports, uh, Cuba was blessed with many bays, beautiful bag bays, ample, chartered. And then, of course, we have many ports. And probably the most uh, talked about one is the, the port of Mariel that was uh, recently revamped and because the, the port of Havana has this derelict industrial character, which is good. We are getting rid of the, uh, of the industrial character of the harbor, and we have a wonderful opportunity for making a contemporary harbor related to sports in such a way that it becomes, uh, again, the engine of the Cuban economy. As you know, the Havana Harbor was always the economic engine of Cuba. You may remember that uh, Havana boasted the most important arsenal in the world in the colonial times, 17th and 18th century. The El Arsenal de La Habana, the arsenal of Havana, uh, was the most not only well-known in the world, but the most important one, the most productive. Of course, they terminated the Cuban woods. Uh, but that, that was a time when no one talked about sustainability. Uh, so this is the harbor of Havana, this is the bay, and we, of course, uh, have a plan for the bay. We, we believe that the, um, the renovation of the, of, the, of the bay of Havana can become a model for the whole regeneration of Cuba. And this is um, a scale model, so you can have a, um, a sense, for those of you who haven't visited, of the potential of the area. And then there are other ports that are traditionally important, like the port of Matanza, Santiago de Cuba, Cienfuegos, and some of them that are also located in beautiful bays, like is the case for Matanza, Cienfuegos specifically, but also Jibara, that was turned down by um, recent hurricanes. So when it comes to railway, this is the, um, the Central Railway Station uh, built in 1912 that is be uh, going to become Museum of the Railway in Cuba. And um, the terminal is going to be relocated, a great opportunity for um, the railway in Cuba. But this is important because Cuba, as you see, is an elongated island. So railway systems make a lot of sense. It's the most efficient transportation um, um, concept that we can use, and as, as we see, it was developed across the island. So we need to take care of this because the most ancient uh, railway stations are really, really in bad condition. And they have lo they have lost their roofs, even though they have been um, recently rebuilt in a very poor way, by the way, uh, like like this one I'm showing here. Uh, you see, it lost its roof, and uh, it was uh, rebuilt in a very uh, disastrous condition. So um, this is the existing condition of, of the tracks, as you can see. Nobody takes care of this. It's a, it's a mess. It's dangerous. So this is something that is out of code 
in all regards. And also, these uh, train stations were built, most of them, in the 19th century, so they are mostly a century old. And well, we are also proud to keep the only electric train running in America, the Hershey, related to the chocolate Hershey uh, family, um, who had beautiful gardens in their bate. I don't know if there's someone related to Hershey here, but uh, chocolate was not only a byproduct of this train, and we, we believe that this is part of our, of our industrial heritage that should be maintained and kept. Um, so this is also something to, uh, to, have in, to bear in mind for the future. Um, well, what about roads, bridges, and tunnels? Well, this is um, uh, a map showing you the, the thoroughfare, and you can see that, yes, there are roads. But as it's been recently acknowledged by the current president of Cuba, uh, they are in bad conditions, and I think he called it a living cemetery uh, because there's a um, lack of uh, lights, lack of lighting, and appropriate signalization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's um, it's very dangerous for people who go there and rent a car and go across the island. It's a real danger. It's a threat. So when, when it comes to Havana, the capital, of course, um, is, uh, you, you see here how well served it is by, by roads. But you, you find that they, they have holes and they are not well lit as well. And then the highways, um, they are really in, in bad shape. They, they have drainage problems. They flood. And you can see that they need also to be taken care of. Well, the tunnel, uh, this is good news. It was um, renovated. It, was, um, it had a, a comprehensive renovation some years ago. So it's in good shape. Uh, besides, the, um, it was very well built by this French company in 1958. But then some other tunnels, like the one on Linea Street on Fifth Avenue, etc., they flood. They also need maintenance and need to, to, to have a project that takes care of them. Um, bridges. Well, um, in a city like Matanzas, that is also known as the city of bridges or the Athens of Cuba, uh, some of these bridges um, have received some maintenance, but most of them they haven't. So they, they need to take care of these too. This is the um, Yayabo Bridge over uh, the, the, the river of the same name. Um, it's one of the oldest in Cuba. As you know, Santi Spiritus was one of the first settlements founded by the, by the Spaniards, by Diego Velasquez himself. So it's um, also part of our heritage. Uh, then we have these conditions. These were bridges that were built um, by American companies working in Cuba. You know, um, there was... Um, a spirit of collaboration uh, uh, along the whole um, stretch between 1902 and 1958 between uh, Cuban uh, and American engineers and architects and the most important construction companies, engineering companies, worked in Cuba and they worked closely with uh, Cuban architects and engineers. So there's a whole history, there's a whole culture about that. But right now what we find is that, you know, this deteriorated condition for bits transit. So some of these bridges have been vandalized and is really uh, giving us the idea of a very dangerous condition as well. So um, these are really uh, pitches that, that are really frightening because you think, well, what if I don't know about this? What if I get there? And I find these conditions. So, all of these, all of them, need maintenance. And the Malecon, which is a wonderful avenue, which is uh, considered the living room of Havana, um, is facing uh, flooding problems. So, it has become a, um, a real um, problem for the city, and we don't see any solution in in the short term. And this is why you're you going to see um, 
that our proposal tackles that in terms of solving that mm, in, a, in a definitive way. Um, Havana thoroughfare, where there's some streets that are in good shape, uh, for example, Fifth Avenue, which is the, the most manicured uh, mm, street in Havana, and with this uh, tower, uh, by the way, built, designed and built by an American architect, uh, George Duncan, and then we see that there are spaces here. This is a, uh, a space where there was a, a plaza built, but it has no urban significance, and also mm, the buildings around it, uh, commercial malls, etc., are really, really uh, lacking architectural design, to say the least. And then there are other streets that you may um, remember, or at least your your families, that are mm, very important in the in the city and and how the city functions. That are really claiming uh, maintenance and condition. That's also the case for um, the rest of the country. And I I would say that Cienfuegos is kind of an exception. Cienfuegos is a very well kept city. Um, is very well maintained. So this is really an exception. Uh, water infrastructure and garbage are really, really uh, critical in Cuba. So um, water supply is um, tremendously uh, important. Havana has um, real, real problems with water supply and garbage. And, and so, just so you know, and this is public records, the Japanese government has uh, made a donation uh, mm, for the city of Havana to take care of the garbage, do a recollection of garbage. So this is completely uh, unacceptable. How can a foreign government <laughs> help us with this? We should take care of this as we, as we take care of our homes. So anyway, you, you see the condition, you see what's the problem with the sewage, water supply sh uh, shortage, electricity, waste management, and sadly, garbage collection. So this is a kind of, it's not only the streets, but also the, the, the sidewalks, as we were talking this morning. And this, this turns the city into a complete, completely unacceptable condition for um, the normal daily life um, functioning. So this, the fish and garbage collection, health problem derived from uh, poor and dangerous sanitary conditions, as we know. So. Th this is something that we should tackle immediately. As I said, water supply, and, and this is why you see so many water reservoirs on the, on the roofs of the buildings, because of the insufficient um, water supply to houses, etc. As I mentioned, flooding is also an engineering problem. This is completely, look at the level of water just after, these are recent pictures, just after the, the recent hurricanes that hit Havana. And the rain caused all these problems, but also because of the malecon that makes um, like a ball in between the malecon and the rest of the city. So mm, green infrastructure, to say the least, uh, is something that we aspire to increase. All this has been considered in the, these plans that we have drafted uh, for Havana and for Cuba, uh, because we believe that Planning, infrastructure planning is key uh, for the future of Cuba and that even though when uh, we cannot see the future, we can plan for it. So this is the, um, the concepts that the master plan of Havana is based upon and um, they are kind of illustrated here. I don't have the time to go through all this in detail. I would love to, but this is just a different lecture that I usually uh, give. And then just for you to have an idea of the potential of the places, we have planned for the harbor. For the first time in history, the master plan of Havana is, has not been dictated by any government and is not related to any military uh, apparatus. In the colonial times, there were always military plans. They were dictated by the army. They were dictated by defensive conditions. Most recently, has the, the plans that um, Havana has had uh, have been dictated by the government. This is for the first time a, a plan that I have conceived based 
upon the needs of Havana and based on the history, the idiosyncrasy, and the geography of the, of the city, thinking of the future development of the city. Um, so, as I said, this is based on, on these uh, concepts. And then, this is probably the most interesting and ambitious uh, uh, engineering uh, project. It's an east-west tunnel parallel to the Malecon, taking advantage of the slope of the reef. And it will solve the congestion, it will solve the flooding, and it will create a wonderful promenade along the whole uh, Malecon and will give Havana a different and future contemporary image. Like we see in Barcelona, it will give Havana also an increase of green infrastructure because that would allow to plant a lot of trees. This is the part that is claimed in such a way that all this becomes a beautiful uh, plaza. This is a part of the plan for the uh, sector of Central, Hav Central Havana, which is the most dilapidated district in, in Havana. This is the existing, uh, the former National Bank of Cuba, where the still the vaults are still there in this building, even though it was uh, turned into a hospital in 1972. Um, as we see, the, the buildings in white are new, and, and they provide, this also provides um, squares and a lot of uh, open space, civic space for the people. This is a plan for Miramar that uh, we believe is very important because of the presence of the Armendares River, which is also another engineering pro uh, project. Um, and finally, um, this is a master plan for Cuba, for the future of Cuba that we are currently working on. And these are the concepts that it is based upon. And we believe that as we speak, the embryo of this transformation is um, taking over all of us, Cubans and Cuban Americans, uh, who believe that Cuba has a wonderful future as it had a wonderful past. Thank you very much.